I have this discussion about once a month with other freelancers when they're trying to figure out uh, if they should incorporate or continue to be a sole proprietor. And if they do incorporate, what's the best route to go? Is it C corporation, S corporation, or LLC? Now all of this is specific to the United States. And the general answer is it depends, right? But I will say that from my peer group over the last 20 years, um, the individuals that have been sort of the top of their game, I don't want to say most successful, but uh, the most business savvy about how they run their business, uh, it's very consistent. They're all S corporations. And I'm going to take you through the, the top level reason why S Corp is better than sole proprietor or even an LLC, and that's for the tax savings. So I'm going to make some assumptions here and, you know, all of this is based on my experience as a small business owner. I don't have any formal training in uh, accounting, tax law, bookkeeping, but uh, I have spent a, a fortune with different CPAs over the last 20 years doing my own taxes. So uh, anyway, just take this all as uh, informative and be sure to, you know, double check with your own professional and do your own research, particularly on these tax rates that I'm going to plug in. I'm making a bunch of assumptions and I've probably made a few minor mistakes here. Okay. So first thing is we're going to start with the company revenue. So total invoices for a calendar year. You know, you're, I know you're not going to do this in year one, but you get a couple years in your business. And again, just looking at my peer group, it's not uncommon for someone who's working in a specialty, and they also have some uh, equipment or specialty, you know, tools, their kit that they bring onto the project to collaborate. You know, you're going to be doing uh, an average of about 10,000 a month or 120,000 for the year or better. And then let's assume out of that 120 in billing, you're going to have about 40,000 in expenses. Now that's, you know, equipment updates, business insurance, maybe it's mileage or it's the cost of a work vehicle, you know, whatever the top level business expenses are, which would deduct from your uh, taxable income at the business level. So when you're set up as an S corporation, you're taxed as an individual, as the business owner or multiple owners. There's some restrictions on S corps. Like I believe it, it's restricted to just an owner plus a spouse. Um, double check on that. It may have changed because it's been many years since I set up my company. But uh, basically, the company does not pay any taxes outside of payroll tax. Everything just flows down to the owner of the company. And then on your personal tax return, you make uh, tax payments. So with that said, uh, you want to issue payroll to yourself, um, which should be a portion of your revenue. Now, there's some tax IRS definitions on how much you should compensate yourself. It's not a specific dollar amount, but you know, it should be you're working full time in the business is the first assumption. And then two, like you can't do say a million dollars in revenue and then only pay yourself $10,000. Like it's gotta be a, a competitive wage. Now what's the wage for a, a video professional, you know, a camera operator? Is it, is it $200,000? Is it $20,000? Uh, it's pretty vague and open-ended. And I would say, you know, the, the mean is going to be on the, the low side. Uh, so I've, I'm paying myself the last couple of years, $40,000 in payroll. And I use a payroll company to issue that to me. And then, um, the company has to pay <clears throat> what are called payroll taxes, you know, in California. And I'm using the state of California for this example, uh, cause that's where I worked for the majority of my career, you know, California workers comp. Now as a business owner, that's actually optional. Uh, you don't necessarily need to have it if you're a business owner, but some of my clients required it. So I had to carry it. And actually at the moment, now that I'm in Texas, as of today, I'm not carrying Texas workers comp I'm kind of in a wait and see if I get to, uh, a job that I'm not going to be able to book because they want workers comp. And I think it's financially viable. Then maybe I'll turn it on. Um, we'll see. I actually passed on a job in De December because my annual cost for workers comp exceeded what my uh, net profit would have been on the small shoot in December. So it's like, just wasn't worth it for a, a one-off uh, social security. So half of your social security and Medicare are paid by the employer. And the other half is withheld from the employee's paycheck. So these are all fixed percentages. 
up to a threshold. I think it's like 130 or 140 thousand dollars. You have to look it up, but just let's just assume that uh, you know they're fixed amounts for whatever you're going to comp yourself. So 40,000 in business expenses, 40,000 in payroll. There's actually uh, the that costs the company six thousand six hundred seventy-two dollars approximately, and uh, that assumes you know all of these uh, fixed payroll costs. So that leaves a company gross profit of thirty-three thousand dollars, which means that's a, a profit you can distribute to yourself, the owner, uh, directly, and then, like I said earlier, you will pay the tax on that proceed on your individual tax return. So if I look at my gross pay here, gross compensation as the business owner at 40,000 in payroll, 33,000 in profit share, that's a total income of $73,000 off of, you know, a total invoice gross of 120,000. Now moving on to the uh, individual employee slash business owner tax rates. These percentages, the, the federal tax rate percentage is the effective tax rate. So, you know, in the U.S. we have this progressive tax bracket where you start at 0%, and then any dollars earned over a certain amount are then taxed at 12%, and then anything over the next threshold is taxed at 22%, and then 24, and it expands, and it can change annually. But uh, based on 73,328, I used a tax calculator to come up with my effective tax rate. I'll show you the uh, calculators I used at the end of the video, and I'll put links in the description so you can play with these as well. But uh, effective tax rate on 73,328, is uh, $9,200. $9, now, the employee or the individual side, you have to pay FICA tax withheld from your payroll, right? So the business paid, Social Security and Medicare, these two values, and then from that 40000 the individual also has to pay a portion. Now, if you were an employee of a, someone else's company, then you sort of only see the employee side withholding, even though your employer is paying the other half. But when you own the business, you know, it's called self-employment tax. You have to pay both sides of the FICA tax. However, you do not have to pay FICA tax on the profit share, only on the wages earned. So this 33328 does not require FICA tax above or below so this uh, 3060 in taxes due on FICA is only from the 40,000 in payroll. The federal effective tax rate is a combination of the payroll plus the profit share. And then California tax, if you're in the state of California, this other 4.78 effective tax rate is the sum of all of your compensation so 73,000. So the, the big savings here is on the FICA tax, you're saving approximately 7.65% off of the profit share component of your income. That brings us to a net income. And my assumption here is you're a individual, not married, so single, single filing. 57,000 568 is the net income, the after-tax spendable dollars that you have on the personal level. Okay, so now let's compare a sole proprietor or even a LLC business structure to an S-Corp. Only now that you're a sole proprietor, you don't need to payroll, um, which allows you to bypass workers' comp, unemployment, all of this stuff you don't have to pay tax on. Uh, however, you know there are benefits to this, and our uh, 2020 was proof of that. That was uh, my first time collecting unemployment. And since I'd paid into the state and federal fund for many, many years, and you know, that worked out to uh, our net after tax proceeds for, uh, I have two employees on my company, my wife plus myself, worked out to a, a net after tax income of like $7,000 a month for uh, the middle of 2020 when we were not working because the state told me we couldn't work. So had I not had that, um, there was a, a special benefit for the self-employed, but it was quite a bit less. Like, I, I don't remember now. I think we would have cleared like $1,200 instead of $7,000. So, um, you know, that's kind of crazy event you certainly can't predict. And uh, here we are. It's exactly what happened. All right. So as a sole prop or an LLC, same numbers, you do 120000 in billing for the year. You have 40,000 in expenses. 
So that works out to your owner or employee profit or distribution of 80,000. Only this time it is all distributed, uh, no payroll, just gonna send it all out as a profit share. And when you are self-employed or the business owner, you have to pay the full self-employment tax, which is a fixed 15.3%. That's your FICA, your Medicare and Social Security. So on 80,000, that works out to $12,240. Your effective tax rate ends up being a touch higher. And again, I just used the tax calculator, which I'll show you at the end of the video. And then the California tax rate works out, pencils out to be a, a touch higher as well. And that's because your uh, gross individual income is 80,000 versus 73,000. So that's why the effective tax rates are a touch higher. So that works out to a net income, which is after tax of $53,000 versus on the S corp side, we had 57.5. So just do the math here and see. So you pay $4,600 less as an S corp than an LLC or a sole proprietor. Now, if you're married and can put your spouse on payroll, there's the potential for a little bit more tax savings. Um, we've done this in years past, and uh, my wife helps out with the business, doing some of the admin, the booking, and the scheduling, and pickups and drop-offs, and basically major support role. As I grew, it was just too much for me to do by myself. So, uh, you know, let's say the company revenues increased a bit to 160,000. Expenses have stayed the same. And in this case, I just did two wages at 30,000 each. So total company payroll, 60,000. That works out to a company cost on that payroll, 70,000. So off of uh, 160 in revenue, less expenses and payroll costs, get a company gross profit of uh, just under $50,000. And when you plug those same numbers on the LLC side, and then for both, I've updated the effective tax rates for an S-Corp, you have a net income of 91000 and for a, as a sole proprietor or LLC, it's 84480 So you've got a tax savings of $6,777 to operate as an S-Corp, distributing a profit share. The thing you need to be aware of when you run as an S-Corp and a profit share is long-term, you're reducing your Social Security benefit at retirement age because you've you know you've paid less into it as a wage earner um, but social security's got uh, what are called bend points it's a graph where like the first dollars up to i think it's up to about eight hundred dollars you get the highest benefit payback and then from eight hundred dollars up to the next bend point you get paid a smaller percentage of what you paid in and it ratchets up as your wages increase so it's not dollar for dollar so in a situation, if you're married and you can have both employees on payroll, now you're funding two social security accounts at the most advantageous bend point. And then the second piece to think about is these tax savings, you really should plan to invest that in something to offset your reduced social security. So, you know, IRA, 401k, some other type of investment, real estate, uh, you know, don't just think of that as uh, bonus income that you can burn on uh, living expenses and lifestyle upgrades. Okay, I used two calculators to come up with my effective tax rates and payroll numbers. The first was for payroll, and I used this entertainment payroll company called Wrapbook. I actually have some experience with this company on productions that use them to issue payroll to crew members and cast. And if you go on their resource section, they have a payroll estimator. You can choose your state and wages. So you see here, if we put in 40000 and we get to all the effective rates. Like I said, workers comp, you could consider, you may or may not want to do that. If you're the business owner, check with your state, but you may not be required to pay in a workers comp. Uh, and then all the other stuff are fixed rates. And then wrap up charges a, a payroll cost. Where is it? 0.75%. So uh, I pay a little bit less because I use my um, accounting firm actually does my payroll for me. On the income tax side, I use this calculator that Smart Asset provides. I think Smart Asset is a, like a robo advisor for retirement and investment accounts. Uh, they've got some excellent calculators on their site. So I used uh, their calculator 
Let's just do California, single filing, 40,000 household income. And you can see here, the, you lift out the effective tax rates, but where you're self-employed, you gotta be aware of a couple of things here. Um, one, the FICA tax is only tax on the payroll portion of your income, or if you're a S Corp, or if you're an LLC or sole proprietor, your FICA tax is two times this. You gotta double it. And then on the S Corp side, like I explained earlier, you know, some of it is taxed up in the payroll side, and the other half's taxed below, and then the profit share portion has no FICA tax at all. All right, I know it's confusing, but hopefully that illustrates it a bit. I will share this spreadsheet so you can make a copy of it off of Google Sheets and then these two calculators so you can play with some numbers with your revenue and anticipated revenue in future years to see whether or not an S-Corp is advantageous. Another thing to keep in mind with a LLC or S-Corp, um, actually I don't have direct experience with an LLC, but with an S-Corp, it's another tax return. You have to do a business tax return and you gotta have standalone business accounts that are only for the business. You don't wanna commingle your personal expenses with business, you gotta keep them separate. So there's a little bit of extra cost and admin time to maintain the entity. But you know, in my s example here, where you're saving $4,600, uh, you're not gonna spend 4,600 with an accountant and bank accounts like, eh, I don't know, you might spend $1,500 on a business basic business tax return. And then your bank accounts, if you do it right, they cost nothing. It's just a little bit of your time to get it set up. All right, let me know what you think in the comments below. Please point out any um, flaws or errors you see in my math or thinking. And uh, oh yeah, one last thing is like, if you dump workers comp, in my first scenario, now I'm up to a $6,000 savings. Yeah, 1500 bucks, $1,600. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching.